This background has a name. It's Bliss. No, really. This. This is Bliss. Nobody knows it, but that is the title. It has a backstory, more of a backstory than most photographs have. It was not always called Bliss, nor is it still. For an image that graced every edition of Windows XP, it has many names and many languages. In the Dutch edition, it was called Ireland, or Ireland in Dutch, despite the photo being from the USA. This led to more than a little confusion. It exists everywhere from Antananarivo to Antwerp. It has been cited in both the White House and the Kremlin, but is it even real to begin with? Why is it Bliss? Well, that's just the name Microsoft gave it. People have always wondered if it was forged, photoshopped, or just a photograph. People have been exposed to it so much it has become unreal. Across the globe, it is constant on every copy of XP. After all, Microsoft has sold more than 500 million copies of XP to every nation and nationality. More than a billion people have seen this image. That's about 12.9 or 13% of the current global population. What makes it so special? What is so blissful about bliss? Why not Wind, Radiance, or Red Moon Desert, the other default XP wallpapers? The only one who can barely compare is Autumn, but Bliss still dominates. It is so universal, people just ignore it. Like, wallpaper. Someone had to have made it, right? Or is it just some machine algorithm or Photoshop? Either, actually. A blood and bone human snapped this unreal shot. And for years, people debated over who and where. Ireland or Washington. Even Microsoft was not so sure at one point. And yes, it was a photograph. One taken in either 1996 or 1999. Several sources give conflicting dates, but Wikipedia says 1996, so by god, this video will go with 1996. Where exactly? Why, on one crispy January afternoon in 1996, in the lands called California, after one winter storm by one miracle man. And, by pure coincidence, the photo would follow him his entire life. This is the man behind the Microsoft desktop. This is Charles, or Chuck O'Rear. One day he caught Bliss. But Chuck was not just anyone. Beside being an accomplished photographer, Chuck has worked for both the Los Angeles Times and National Geographic. This hand? It's Mr. O'Rear's, the only photographer to appear on a cover, beside Coco the Gorilla. So when the then 55-year-old Mr. O'Rear went wandering on that Friday afternoon, he was not just going for a stroll. Well, he was actually, to see his then-girlfriend and current wife Daphne. Chuck had been looking to take the photograph for a while, and that Friday afternoon in January was his perfect chance. After winter storms in California, the grasses looked particularly green. This photo was taken in wine country, an especially verdant area in the state of California. An area off Highway 12 from Sonoma County to Napa County in California. The image? It's all natural. At least it was when O'Rear snapped the photograph. It was under the perfect conditions. Microsoft edited it slightly later on, but we will come to that. The fact is, the original photograph was a real moment in time. Stopping his car on the then country road, O'Rear took the photograph on a medium format Mamiya RZ67 film camera with Fujifilm's Velvilia film upon a tripod, a film type well known for its luxurious colors. And the photo turned out nearly perfect. O'Rear snapped four shots in the sequence, one with the clear sky, one with the clouds, and two afterward. In that moment, he thought nothing of it. It seemed innocent enough. After that, Chuck continued on to his girlfriend. It was only later when he provided the photo to his agent through the stock photo company Corbis. In 1996, the digital service only had maybe a hundred photographs on it. One of them was Chuck's shot of those California hills. Then about four years later, Mr. O'Rear got a message. Corbis had been acquired by one Mr. Gates. As the head of Microsoft, Bill Gates was looking for a simple enough image to use for the XP operating system's background. Instead of a neutral color or composition, Windows was looking for an actual photograph. Luckily, Chuck still had the still. A still Microsoft wanted, and all the rights to it. They really wanted the rights. To this day, it is still unknown who stumbled over the image at Microsoft, or why it was chosen. But it was for a pretty price as well, but the exact number has never been disclosed. A non-disclosure agreement keeps Chuck from divulging the price, though most estimates place it at around $100,000 or more, or as Chuck has stated, an extraordinary payment for the photo. 
The price was nice, but the problem was getting the still to Microsoft. Since the photo was so expensive, shipment was the issue. The package was pretty prohibitively expensive. O'Rear first tried FedEx, but they only insure packages up to $1,000. Instead of sending it through the mail, Microsoft just paid Chuck to fly from California to Seattle to deliver the package by hand to their headquarters, a process cheaper than actually shipping it through the mail. He handed the still off to Microsoft, or an attorney, and the deal was done. Once Chuck handed the photo off, it was Microsoft's. They had paid one of the world's largest sums for a photograph, after all. One can literally measure wealth by desktop backgrounds with this statistic. So what did they do with it? They made it iconic. The image is so powerful because it is so neutral. It is bliss, after all. It was Microsoft, or one random engineer, that gave it the name. The truth is, once the image entered Microsoft, its history is a bit of a black box. Chuck has no idea, too. People can only guess at why it was chosen, though, through the last decade, a few details have leaked as XP was discontinued in 2014. Still, beyond its operating system, Bliss and its lore live on. What we do know is that the original image was slightly different. What I believe to be an original copy of the photograph was uploaded to archive.org, supposedly by Mr. Rear. So this is probably the best comparison. What is known is the small altercations Microsoft made to it. The only two confirmed edits are Microsoft cropping it for desktop and slightly upping the greens for color, as to make the image more appealing. Besides that, there was supposedly nothing else done to it. Supposedly. Though, due to being so famous, a few conspiracies always emerge, even for a desktop background. Due to how omnipresent Bliss is, people literally claim to see writing on the wall. Some claim the clouds are fake, the mountains in the background are modified, or there is writing somewhere on the image. A common schoolboy superstition is something is hidden in this dark, shrubbed area. But no, that's just the interplay of scrub and shadow, your brain playing tricks on you. Go look at the man in the moon. So, when XP shipped on August 24th, 2001, the image appeared across the world. As O'Rear has claimed, anyone who is above 15 in 2014 will likely eternally remember this image. People saw it either on their home desktops or on school computers. It was everywhere. To this day, remakes and remixes of it are constant. If the internet has a national flag, this is likely it. Plenty of eyes have glazed over looking at it. All the attention levied upon it through the years has made it magical. This is why so many people think it is fake. It seems too constant slash complete to be real. After a few years, people inside Microsoft even got suspicious. Engineers thought it was photoshopped, and others thought it was taken in Washington. It did not help everyone had a different explanation for its origin. So the confusion about it also existed inside Microsoft. It was only when employees wrote Charles O'Rear that he could confirm this image was in fact his. Or Microsoft's legally, but he had captured it. After his letter, Chuck got 108 x 10s from Microsoft employees asking him to autograph them and send them back. Chuck has never confirmed or denied if he did. But Chuck has given the image a second shot. After years of being a holdout, Mr. O'Rear eventually adopted digital photography. He's even said, while the picture has a soft spot in his heart, he thinks the digital camera could have taken it better. It can even be seen on O'Rear's website where he posts plenty of excellent photographs. Bliss is given a top spot of course, including a recreation O'Rear has attempted in Photoshop. It's up to the viewer if it compares or not, but it's Chuck's most recent interpretation. Lord knows there have been plenty of others. Mr. O'Rear is still bemused the photo is his greatest achievement, though, even if it was on accident. Compared to Peter Burian's Autumn, which only sold for $300 and Burian received only $45 from the sale, in contrast, Chuck's legacy being a desktop background is well worth the wealth, even if it was $100,000 or more. But why exactly this image? Is there a bit more to it? What actually was the time and setting? As Mr. O'Rear has stated, the image was taken on a Friday afternoon in January. What year? Either 1996 or 1998. For my hypothesis, I am going with 96, since that is the most commonly reported date, but I'd love for someone to correct me. Now the location. North of San Francisco in Sonoma slash Napa County, it was on the Sonoma Highway. The Google Map coordinate is this. After two decades, the route has grown from a humble country road to one of California's deadliest roadways. So this is the exact location, but Chuck has stated the hills were so green due to a recent storm slash shower. Can we get an even more precise date than just some Friday in the January of 1996? Why yes, yes we can. It will not be perfect, but there is a few ways to figure out the date. Not the best resources, but with some acumen, it is possible to figure out the exact date the legendary Bliss was taken, even if only in a vague time frame. So January 1996, that narrows the date down to 31 days. 
And a Friday too, then there is only four possible dates if it was actually a Friday in that January. The 5th, the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th. So how can the date be determined? By the weather. We know the pictures were taken after a recent rain, and have only partial clouds in the sky. There is little to no fog or haze too, as the visibility is good. Good enough to see all the peaks in the background. Using the Farmer's Almanac records and Weather Underground's weather history, though not the best sources, an estimate can be made. The three variables to mainly consider are rain, fog, and visibility. So how does each date stack up? We have to rely on the reports of a weather station about 39 miles away, so not the best proximity either, but it is the best source we have once again. Each date requires an educated guess and some assumptions with the scan information. January 5th, according to Farmer's Olneck, had a visibility of 20 miles, which is a good amount with no haze or fog, but according to Weather Underground, the Charles M. Scholl Sonoma County Airport Station logged no rain with little sun, so this day is unlikely to be the one we are looking for. January 12th, the visibility was only at 1.8 miles, which already makes it unlikely, due to the heavy fog. On the weather front, only haze and no rain. This date is a definite no. January 19th, visibility was at 14.8 miles, which is not bad, but the almanac also reports fog and rain slash drizzle. The weather, it reports partly cloudy, with rain the previous day. Not even an inch, but rain supposedly, with both January 18th and 20th also reporting rain. Not a bad possibility. January 26, visibility was at 17.9 miles with neither fog nor haze. Weather Underground claims the day was rainy, but does not show any precipitation on the chart for some reason. That's the data. Not foolproof facts, but it is all I could scrape up online. There are probably more detailed records and archives not online, ones I cannot access. What's the verdict then with this information? It is tough. The date, if it was truly in 1996, is either January 19th or 26th. January 19th was the partially cloudy sky that would fit Bliss the best. January 26th reports no fog though. If someone could turn up more detailed weather reports from the area, a more definite solution could be reached. But for now, I, personally, believe Bliss was captured on January 19th, 1996. Why? Beside being partly cloudy, the day is flanked by two days of supposed rain. January 19th is the only Friday that really fits. Chuck O'Rear's greatest photo was captured on the afternoon of January 19th, 1996, a moment he still appreciates to this day. Even after a life of photography, Mr. O'Rear still holds bliss above all else. It's the only photo pretty much everyone has seen and recognizes. Who else can claim to have taken such a picture? It may not be impactful, but it is omnipresent. Even O'Rear, while he still thinks the image is nice, has asked the question, who would want to hang it on their wall? The perfect image for a virtual wall, then. Bliss is a real place though, except today the vineyards have conquered the hill. Arir used to know the landowners, but they sold the hill years ago. So now it is just another bump in wine country. What kind of landmark even is a popular hill? You can find it on Google Maps. The address is 3101 Fremont Drive, Sonoma Highway, Sonoma, California. People thought the place burned up in the California wildfires, but it survived. But did the original slides somewhere in Microsoft headquarters also live on? It is an impressive location, if only by repetition. The photo is truly extraordinary. Then does it have any meaning? Well, no, it's just a desktop background. Anything can have a history though, even a desktop background. It is important to someone, the person who captured it, the company, or the computer user. There is just an odd power to it, as if it could survive humanity. Here is the platonic form of a photo. It makes one wonder about everything behind it. Truly a modern relic. It is a pretty detailed story for just another desktop background. Truly bliss.